Hey Bulldogs, Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933 here, and in today's Cisco certification video practice exam, we're going to take on layer 2 and talk about local significance a bit. And as always, we go through the questions at a pretty good clip, so we've got plenty of time at the end of the video to not only just give you the answer, but we're going to show it on live Cisco equipment and discuss it as well. So it's kind of a combination video practice exam and tutorial today. And also want to remind you, especially if you're watching this video on YouTube or on our website, to check out our 40-minute ad-free Ether Channel webinar. We've got that posted on YouTube. Uh, literally dozens of sites around the web now pick that up as well and also it's on the Bulldog blog at the bryantadvantage.blogspot.com about 40 minutes of free CCNA CCNP training there for you and I know you'll enjoy that. Let's jump into question one here and as always with my multiple choice questions the format is select all that apply. So here today we'll talk about what local significant, locally significant means if you're not familiar with the term but you should definitely know which of these four is locally significant only. And that's a phrase you run into a lot, especially when you're just getting started with your Cisco studies. So we'll chat about that a bit. And also, let me slide the bulldog back over here. What is the default spanning tree port cost of a switch port that is set to 10 mag? You don't have to memorize all the STP default port costs, but knowing that one and a couple others we'll talk about here today, uh, is a good idea. Now on this one you run the command show spanning tree VLAN 1 to see if a local switch is the root bridge for that particular VLAN. Name at least two different values that are going to differ between a non-root and a root switch in the output of that command. Yeah it's a lot to remember there and we'll see that live and that's good for you to know as well because of course we know the root is going to say this bridge is the root in the output of that command but of course the exam just might not make it that simple. Finally, when is the minimum and maximum number of trunks you can place into a single ether channel? So let's take a look at these questions and go through them again here with local significance only. The frame relay delsi, that's one of the first things you learn about that is actually locally significant only. And by that term what we mean is that it's a value that is not advertised to downstream devices whether they be switches or routers because frankly the downstream device doesn't care so we're not going to advertise it. So the frame relay DELSI is locally significant only that's why we can reuse it throughout the same frame network if we choose to do so. The OSPF process number is a value that does not have to be agreed upon between potential OSPF neighbors so that is locally significant only. The EIGRP autonomous system number though is a value that has to be agreed on by potential neighbors. It is advertised via EIGRP to downstream neighbors or potential downstream neighbors and therefore that is not locally significant only. The STP port costs are actually locally significant only as well. Uh, you're probably familiar with the way the BPDUs will increment those port costs as they go through the network but uh, they are locally significant only. They are not uh, advertised to downstream switches. Speaking of those STP port costs, what is the default STP port cost of basically an Ethernet port or a port that's set to 10 meg? Let's take a look. Let's bring the live equipment up and I'm going to run show spanning VLAN 1 since we're going to be coming to, back to that in just a moment. And you can see we've got a couple of different port costs here in STP. We've got one interface that's running uh, or has a cost of 100 and these other two have a cost of 19. Now while they're all fast Ethernet ports I think we're gonna find actually let's let's not think let's know let's go to that. I'm looking at fast 03 here and you'll notice that it is set to half duplex 10 meg. So we've got a 10 meg port here, a port running at 10 meg and it had a port cost of 100 and now I'll go ahead and run show fast, show int fast 011 and this one is running at full duplex and 100 meg and it's that 100 meg that gives it that port cost of 19. So I'll run show spanning VLAN 1 one more time and actually we'll come back to it for the next question. Again our port that was running at 10 meg has an STP port cost of 100 and our ports that are running at 100 meg have a cost of 19. 
Uh, again, you're not going to be asked to calculate port costs on your exams. That's pretty complex, and that's why we let STP do that math. But it's a good idea to know those two just off the top of your head. Now, we talked about this particular command and ran it just now, and I'll bring the live equipment up in just a moment. Show spanning tree VLAN 1. Let's take a look at that and see if we're on the route. Now, this bridge is the route is a pretty good tip-off to the fact that this bridge is indeed the route. So let's hop over to the other switch and look at a couple of things that are, that are going to differ between the two. First off, you're not going to see the phrase, this bridge is the route on the non-route, obviously. But another value to watch out for is this MAC address. Because if the MAC address under the root ID is different than the MAC address shown here under bridge ID, then you are not on the route. Because this information under bridge ID is the information for the local switch. So since these MAC addresses are different for the root switch and the local switch, that tells us the local switch is definitely not the root. So that's two differences. Another one is that you're going to see some ports in blocking mode because all of the ports on the root bridge are going to be in forwarding mode. But only one of those leading to the root from the non-root is going to be in forwarding mode and the other one's going to be in blocking mode. Now this one's going off to a host device, so we're kind of ignoring that for right now. These are the two we're looking at. These are the two ports on this switch that lead to the non-root, excuse me, that lead to the root. So one of them is going to be the root port and put in forwarding mode. The other is going to be put into blocking mode. So that's a major difference there. Let me bring the non, excuse me, the root up again. And you'll notice that 11 and 12 here are the other sides of that trunk are in forwarding mode. So that's another difference as well. So a couple different ways to tell if you're on the non-route and a couple of differences between the two. And to sum this one up, the minimum and maximum number of trunks you can place into a single ether channel, as you'll see in that ether channel webinar, the minimum is two and the maximum is eight. And make sure to take a look at that webinar because we do a lot of things, obviously, that you would not be doing in a production network, but it's important to learn that way in a lab environment where we add trunks to it, remove trunks to it, and watch the port costs adapt as well. So a lot of good stuff there going on with an Ether channel. I want to thank you for taking a few minutes to watch today's video. I'm Chris Brandt, CCIE number 12933.